Hi, and welcome to part two of creating knitting graph paper in Microsoft Excel. In part one, we figured out how to convert our stitch gauge into the dimensions of each individual stitch so that we could use that information to set up our Excel column and row dimensions. In this part two, we're gonna look at some of the optional things that we can do to personalize our graph paper or make it more appropriate for whatever project you happen to be working on. And we're gonna start with adjusting margins and, ori and setting the orientation, and then we're gonna move on to adding stitch and row counts. So we're looking here in Excel at our, our graph paper that's at 24 stitches and 30 rows per four inches, that's our gauge we can change the uh, margins and orientation in a couple of ways. One is to click on the page layout tab and select margins or orientation. We can also get to that by going into the page setup area. So for margins, we could have, right now we have normal margins and depending on how you've set up Excel, your normal margins might be different than mine but we could have wide margins, and that would be fewer stitches across the page. Or we could have narrow margins, that would be more stitches across the page. We could even customize our margins to be whatever we want based on what we need for this particular project. I'm gonna go ahead and go to wide margins. Page orientation, portrait is typical where the page is taller than it is wide, but you could easily switch to landscape mode and have a page that's wider than it is tall. Not only is it wider, but of course you can get more stitches across the page um, when you're in landscape mode. So if you have a project that requires a lot more stitches uh, shown, on a chart, then that's the way to go. All right, so that's the margins and orientation. Now let's take a look at adding stitch and row counts. And knitting patterns, when they have charts, you'll see that the rows and the stitches are typically numbered. And the numbering will change depending on if it's a project that's in the round or flat and whether you're looking at the pearl side rows or not and so on. But let's just pretend that we are doing a stranded color work project and that our all of our rows are counted from you know one up to whatever and our stitches are all counted across from the right hand side over to the left. Now I could click in each cell and put in a number, stitch number one, stitch number two, stitch number three, and so on. For small charts, that is perfectly fine, but for larger charts, you might wanna do that automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you can see this more easily. All right, so let's say that I have a pattern repeat of eight stitches by eight stitches. So here's stitch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, stitch eight. I'm gonna put an eight in there. And then what I'm gonna use what's called the uh, series fill. Now, first of all, let me just show you what happens. When the cell is selected, there's a handle down on the lower right, a little square, and if you hover over that with your cursor, you get a black uh, cross, and if you press down on your mouse button and hold and drag across a certain number of cells, it's gonna take the contents of that cell and fill it in all of these. Fabulous, but that's not what we want. We wanted it to count down in a series, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we go to edit, Fill, series, 
And we already know it's in rows because we are we highlighted this so it knows what to what to choose here for our purposes. And we're gonna decrement because Excel only works from left to right, not right to left. So we have to count down. So negative one, and we're gonna stop at stitch number one and say okay. And now we have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we could do that all the way across the page, of course, but I'm just showing on eight stitches. Now we we'll do the same thing uh, with the rows. So stitch one, two, or row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six, row seven, row eight. So I'm gonna put an eight in here. And I'm gonna drag the fill handle, click and drag. And it fills in all eights. But I'm gonna go up to edit, fill, series. And I'm going to say, nope, decrement, because again, Excel will work down, but not up. So we have to count down. And we're gonna stop at stitch one and say, okay. And now we've counted our rows, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So this comes in really handy when um, you know, you're counting all of your rows on the right and all of your stitches across the bottom or the top. All right, so I hope you found this uh, useful and happy charting your knit projects. Bye-bye.